Number 58, integrated concepts. An electron has an initial velocity of 5 times 10 to the 6 meters per second in a uniform 2 times 10 to the 5th Newton per coulomb strength electric field. The field accelerates the electron in the direction opposite to its initial velocity. Letter A, what is the direction of the electric field? All right. So first, the direction here is going to be totally relative to the picture that we're going to draw. So the first thing is, once they tell me that I have a uniform electric field, what I do is this. And it makes, that means I have to have some, right, electric field lines that are pointing in a, in, in the same direction, right? So some area that has a, an electric field to it, okay? Now remember, electric field lines always point from something positive to something negative. And what that means is that basically these electric field lines are pointing from an area that has some positive nature to it. And they're going to be pointing to some area or some thing that has some negative nature to it. All right. So basically now, I like to look at electric fields this way. I always draw in my positive side and my negative side because it allows me uh, better intuition uh, about directions and whatnot and forces and so on and so forth. So now, it says that there is an electron within this electric field. So why don't we put the electron right here? Doesn't really matter if it's here, 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 here. Doesn't matter. All right. So let's just keep it there. Now, it says that this electron has some initial velocity to it. But it also tells us that the electric field opposes the initial velocity. So let me just ask you a question. Pretend we just drop the electron in the field here. What way will the electron move? Pretend it's not moving at the start, but it will begin to move uh, after we let go of it. And what direction will it move? Don't think too, don't overthink it. There's something, remember, it's an electron, so it's negative. This area is positive, this area is negative. What way is this thing going to move? It's going to be attracted to the positive and repulsed by the negative, right? So it should move to the left. Easy, right? It's a little harder if I don't put these in, if I don't put these little bars in with the negative and positive to it, and we just got the lines there, you got to remember that the electron moves in the opposite direction of the field line. That's fine too, you can remember that. But I, I like to do this, it gives me a little better context to the problem. So basically, we said that the acceleration, because there's a force, right, propelling the electron to the left, the acceleration of that electron will be to the left. So basically, now think about that. It says that the field will accelerate the electron in the opposite direction of the initial velocity. So if you told me that the acceleration is to the left, then that direction of the acceleration has to oppose the initial velocity of the electron. So what's the direction then of the initial velocity? It's exactly pointing in the opposite direction to the right okay we'll call it v sub i so this now fully explains part a what direction is the electric field what direction is the electric field well we can we we can give a relative answer i mean you can say to the right if you if you frame the question this way probably what they're looking for though let me just move this over probably what they're looking for is the direction of the electric field is the same as the direction of the initial velocity i think that's what they're really looking for so the electric field, so we'll say E, the uh, electric field direction is the same as V sub I. Cool? So that should take care of that. All right. Letter, um, letter B now. So it says, how far does the electron travel before coming to rest? Hmm. So this sounds like... It sounds like we can we can possibly look at this in a couple of uh, we can possibly look at this in a couple of different uh, from a couple of different perspectives. So uh, let's see how what would be the best way to do this. All right, why don't we do kinematics? Everybody loves kinematics, right? Everyone loves it. So let's look at it from a kinematic perspective. So this this electron here has some initial velocity, and they told that to us, right? So why don't we just write it down? Let's jot down what we know. 5.00 times 10 to the sixth uh, meters per second. What's going to be its final velocity? Well, it said based upon part B, right? It says before coming to rest, how far does it travel? So rest, zero meters per second would be its resting state, okay? Now, since you have a change in velocity, what do you also have? Or what's producing the change in velocity? Well, there's some acceleration, right? 
there's some acceleration that's producing that change in velocity and that we don't know okay also what what don't we know as well we also don't know the time it's going to take to slow this thing down and we also don't know the distance right so we it, it seems like we don't know a lot of things but the the question is what's the distance right that's really what they're asking us for so in order to solve this, I know that if I'm going to use a kinematics perspective, I know that I'm going to need to either know the acceleration of the object or the time it's going to take to slow it down, right? To help me, I, I got to find something. I don't know any formulas that just deal with knowing the change in velocity and then figuring out the, the length, right? So what I have to do is I got to focus on one of these two. And possibly the one that might make the most sense is to focus on the acceleration. Why? Because as we thought about this picture before, there are or there is some force, right, acting on that electron. We said that it's going to be attracted to the positive plate and repulsed by the negative plate. So we know that there's some force on that electron. Can we find, so, and, and I'm thinking, right, how, you know, acceleration is related to force via the following equation. F is equal to ma. So the force on that electron has to be equal to the mass of that electron multiplied by the acceleration of that electron. If I can just find this acceleration, then I can plug it on into here, and then I'll be able to use one of my kinematics equations, all right? So why don't we solve it for the acceleration of that electron right now, okay? And that's going to be simply equal to the force that's acting on that electron divided by then the mass of that electron. So how do I now, do I know the force? Well, no, we don't. But what do we know? Well, we know the strength of the electric field, right? They told that to us. They said the strength of the electric field is going to be 2.00 times 10 to the fifth newtons per coulomb. And what else do we know? Well, we also know the charge and the mass of the electron. Remember, you, you have to have that in the back of your mind. You're always going to know that, all right? Because it'll either be given or you'll have to memorize it. So the mass of the electron is going to be 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. And the charge of the electron, Q sub E, will be equal to negative 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Now, you don't, you know, it's negative, but we're basically going to be dealing with all absolute values here. So don't, don't, don't really worry about it. So now what I realize is I don't know what the force is. But I'm thinking, is there any way I know how to relate that force to like electric field, charges, masses, something like that? And we do. We have a formula over here that relates electric field and force to charge, right? So let me write that down. So we have the electric field that the external electric field, excuse me one second. I'm a little parched. Ah, I'm stuffed. Tell me what movie that's from. If you do, I'll be very, very impressed. I might have mentioned the movie actually before in one of my other videos. Anyway. Uh, at this point, you'll have to search through 1,600 of them to find it, but uh, I wouldn't waste your time. So this is basically the net external electric uh, field, all right, that a certain, that that electron is experiencing will then be equal to the force that's acting on that electron divided by then the charge of that electron. So in order for me to find or calculate this for force, it's just a simple cross multiplication. It's just going to be the external electric field multiplied by the charge of the electron. Now notice, this is the same as this and this is the same as this and thus this I can plug in for that cool hope you followed that okay so here because I I'm not sure if I did uh, a sub e is going to be equal to the external electric field multiplied by the charge of that electron then all divided by the mass of that electron so now why don't we just enough of the substitutions right and you probably say give me a number I don't blame you. So let, let's calculate it. So uh, the external electric field here is going to be the 2.00 times 10 to the fifth. The <clears throat> charge is going to be 1.6 times 10 to the um, minus 19th. My, I can't speak anymore. And then this is all divided by then the mass of the electron, which is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. Now you might notice here, I guess I should probably plug in the negative sign there. But it all depends on the frame of the problem, too. All right, Depend, right. If I just had, you know, changed this, then it's going to be a positive value. But then the the uh, the velocity was negative, so that would have been fine. But the way I like to do this is I like to kind of leave out the signs here, and then think about what the signs should be. 
All right. 2 times 10 to the 5th times then 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th divided by 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. And here we get a nice large acceleration. So this is going to be 3.51 times 10 then to the 16th, and that's in meters per second squared, all right? So, uh, now that is the acceleration. Now here's the thing. I know the acceleration in my picture is gonna be opposing the velocity. So therefore, I'm going to plug in the negative sign for it, okay? So I think about what the sign should be based on the picture I drew. So let me go back to here. Let me erase the question mark there. Now we know it's going to be negative 3.51 times 10 to the 16th, right? Is that what it was? Yeah, times 10 to the 16th. All right, and that is in meters per second squared. Okay, and that should make sense. If it starts with some velocity, ends at zero, shouldn't it be? It, it's decelerating, right? Meaning a negative acceleration. Now what we're going to do is we've got to think, well, how do I, do I know a relationship between all these variables and uh, distance, and we do, right? Remember the kinematics formula. Vf squared is gonna be equal to Vi squared plus two ax, right? So your final velocity was zero. Your initial was gonna be five times 10 to the sixth, that whole thing squared, plus then two times that acceleration of negative 3.51 times 10 to the 16th, multiplied then all by x and solve this for x, all right? So basically five times 10 to the sixth squared, and then you're gonna divide that now by, and it would be negative overall, so then you'll divide that now by two times the negative, uh, the, the distance is gonna be positive here, all right? So two times then 3.5, now let me use the exact number there, one second. So let me grab that exact, great. And that whole thing, parenthesis. So here we get about, 3.56, 3.56 times 10 to the minus fourth. And that is in meters. You can convert that to millimeters if you like, whatever you want to do. That is the displacement, okay, or the distance it has traveled. So that takes care of letter uh, B, right? So let's just bring this on up. I'll bring, actually, I'll bring it on over. So this is because I'm probably going to have to clear out some space, right? because this problem has 17 different parts to it. And uh, so now we get to move on to letter C. All right, so why don't we, uh, why don't we do that? Let's erase some, uh, uh, let me just read it first. Let's see if we should. How long does it take the electron to come to rest? Oh, great. So now I can just calculate the time, right? This is purely kinematics now. So let's just erase some of this, all right? How long? Cool, let's do that. So we gotta, we got to remember one of those formulas for time. So why don't we use the kinematics formula, Vf is equal to Vi plus At. All right, so the final velocity is zero. The initial velocity was 5.00 times 10 to the sixth, plus the acceleration, which is going to be negative 3.51 times 10 to the 16th. And then multiply that then by T. I know I'm running over into the formulas, but what are you going to do? And let's do it. So it's going to be now, um, so five times 10 to the sixth divided then by that ants, that exact value 3.5. I'm using the exact numbers here. So the time it's gonna take is gonna be 1.42 times 10 to the minus 10 seconds. You can convert that into nanoseconds if you like. All right, so it'd be about like what? 0.142 nanoseconds, but that would be the time. So that's now the answer for letter uh, for letter C. So then that takes care of that. Let's take that, plug it down there. Okay, great. And how about letter D? What is the electron's velocity when it returns to its starting point? Okay. So what do you think about that? How are we going to find that, right? What is the velocity when it returns to its starting point? What are, what are, do we have to even calculate it, right? What do you think it kind of should be. What do you think? It's actually going to be the same, right? It's going to be the same as its initial velocity, just in the opposite direction. It's a uniform acceleration there. Okay. So you can go and you can 
actually, you know, the, the intuition is that it should be the same. I mean, just think of just, you can just think about that. If every, every single, where's my acceleration here? Every single second, what this acceleration says is that every single second, the velocity is going to be changing in the negative direction by 3.51 times 10 to the 16 meters per second. I mean, that's what this is telling us. So since the acceleration is constant, you know, as this, as this uh, electron moves to the right, it's slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, it comes to a stop, and then it speeds up, speeds up, speeds up, speeds up, and it speeds back up to its initial velocity. All right. So you can do all types of substitutions, calculate that if you wanted to, you know, double, you're, you're basically doubling the time or you're, you're doubling the displacement, right? I mean, that's really what's happening. You can basically just do the calculation here. Uh, yeah. So why don't I, what I'll do is I'll just, I'll, I'll just give that to you. Basically, we're saying that VF squared will be equal to VI squared plus 2AX. But the distance, the object, the displacement of the object, actually, I should say, it's it's technically doubling the distance. But if we were to think about this through displacement, which we really should, what's the displacement? If it started at this point and it's our final state is that exact same point, the displacement is actually what? It's zero. Bada bing, bada boom. We'll see you later, right? So that what that means now is that the initial the final velocity will equal the initial velocity they're both squared so who cares the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity the signs though might not be the same okay but the magnitudes are because remember right when when you square root these squared values you can basically get the plus and minus all right so you got to do a little thinking there so the magnitudes are the same but the directions will be opposite and therefore, the uh, electron's velocity, when it returns to its starting point, will be this value, but negative, technically. If I frame the problem as going to the right, you know, starting, if I framed it going to the left, then the initial would have been negative and the, and the final would have been positive. So it all depends on how you frame the problem. So the final velocity here would have been negative 5, based on my picture, times 10, uh, times 10 to the uh, sixth, all right, meters per second. Cool. All right, guys, that sums it up. That's letter D. Thanks for tuning in. And I'm not sure how that turned, whatever that is. Uh, that's letter D. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. Hopefully this video helped. And if it did, give us a hand. Hit that subscribe button, like button, and tell your classmates. All right. Thank you so much. Take care.